The most perfect biogas plant in the world is the cow. In a comparable way, the processes in a biogas plant correspond to the digestion principle of ruminants. The perfection of nature is our model when planning biogas plants. Taking as an example the biogas plant at Hamlar, we are introducing the process of a high-powered biogas plant in which a very broad range of various organic residues from the food industry is fermented and demonstrating how in the process valuable energy is created. The biogas plant was largely constructed in order to dispose of production waste from a herb drying farm. On this farm, herbs used for seasoning, for instance parsley, celery, chervil, marjoram or chives are produced. Because only the leaves are dried, up to 100 tons of stalks accumulate every day. At one time, these used to be disposed of, but today valuable energy is obtained from them. The herbal residues accumulating every day are discharged onto a fixed silo plate and tipped into the plant with a wheel loader. Any sap seeping out is likewise a valuable base for the biogas plant and is therefore collected and pumped into the plant. A mash with a consistency of about 10% dry mass is mixed in the masher. Other organic residues can also be mixed into the mash. In the process, fluctuations in the drying process can be offset, but also compensate for the times in which no drying takes place. The aim of every biogas plant should be to operate as consistently as possible throughout the year. Some substances, such as slurry containing fat from the manufacture of chips, even improve the quality of the biogas and gas production. The mashed substrate is made very smooth and milled as finely as possible with a mill. As with cows, the feed is chewed and mixed with saliva to form a slippery mash. At the same time, enzymes are added which ensure optimum digestion. In the two-tiered biogas plant, firstly, the different groups of nutrients, namely fats, proteins and carbohydrates, are broken down by microorganisms into increasingly smaller pieces. In this phase, which is termed acidogenesis, First of all, free fatty acids and carboxylic acids arise as intermediary products. Through the addition of a small quantity of selected enzymes, the natural biological processes are assisted and the decomposition performance of the biogas plant optimized. In the course of the acidifying processes in the biogas plant, the so-called hydrolysis gas arises, which is chiefly carbon dioxide and various odors. Because those are very unpleasant odors, all activities take place in closed halls and containers. The exhaust air is extracted and channeled through a biofilter. Corresponding microorganisms which break down these substances live on the fibrous substrate of the biofilter. If required, a sanitization station is available in the plant in order to heat the fermented substrate to 70 degrees Celsius for one hour and make it germ-free at this temperature. Through the particular construction with waste heat recovery, the energy expenditure for the sanitization is marginal. The substrate, which is well preacidified, is filled every hour into the two digesters with powerful pumps. Two digesters, each with 1,880 cubic meters putrefied volume, are operated in parallel. The biogas obtained is recorded and measured in each digester individually in order to thus always maintain a good overview on the state of the biology. In the biological gas purification, the hydrogen sulfide content in the biogas is reduced. That is also a natural process. Afterwards, the biogas is washed, cooled down and thus condensed out. Each gas line has its own hat gas meter and also its own sampling location for measuring the quality of the gas. With analytical equipment, the methane content, oxygen content and concentration of hydrogen sulfide in the usable biogas are measured online. 
In the gas chamber, the gas flows from the two digesters are merged. Somewhat over 7,000 cubic meters biogas is generated in the plant daily and can be temporarily stored here for around one hour. In the switch room, the user can oversee all the switching and operating statuses of the plant. With this plant, the process temperature in the digester lies in the mesophilic range at 35 degrees Celsius. With a methane content of almost 70% and less than 100 ppm hydrogen sulfide, the quality of the biogas is very good. The biological process in the digesters runs optimally. Three CHP modules run at full load. The CHP unit is housed in premises in the direct vicinity of the drying plant. The heat of 7 million kilowatts per hour simultaneously occurring with the generation of power can consequently be used optimally. 5 million kilowatts energy are generated here annually and fed into the public network. As with cattle, residues are also left over with the biogas plant. Firstly, some flocculants are added to the liquid digestate from the digesters so that, with the aid of a bandpass filter, the part containing solids can be separated out. Mineralized fertilizing nutrients are to be found in the solids. The fermented residue is an excellent fertilizer, which can be collected by farmers if required. Consequently, the nutrients which have been drawn out of the ground in plant production are once again returned to the fields, and the cycle of matter is completed. The water phase, which still looks dirty, is subsequently purified to the quality necessary for the discharge system. In a so-called SBR plant, the load of the wastewater is reduced by blowing in air. The biological purification in an SBR plant always occurs by alternating ventilation and rest periods. The final purification of the water to the standard required by the authorities is then carried out in a membrane filter plant. The total nitrogen is now at under 70 mg per litre, and the CSB, as a measure of the organic load remaining, is reduced to under 300 mg per litre. In order to adhere to the required threshold values, the purification performance of the wastewater treatment plant is permanently monitored in the on-site laboratory. Despite its imposing size, the biogas plant at Hamlar fits well into the landscape. As a result of the measures implemented, there is no impairment of or nuisance to the surroundings. An altogether successful example of the generation of regenerative energy with the greatest benefits and successful recycling management.